Welcome back to the Traders Network Show, broadcasting worldwide from Davos, Switzerland. We're here for the 2020 World Economic Forum. I'm your host, Matt Bird, and my next guests need little introduction on the crypto scene as they're rolling out a new movie called Kryptonia. And our guests are Tostin Hoffman, the director and producer, and Oliver Krauss, the co-producer. Gentlemen, welcome to the show. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Matt. Uh, great. great. Thanks for having us. Thanks. So, guys, um, there's a there's a little claim going on with it, within Davos here about about the movie coming out. Um, we shared offline uh, the inspiration behind it. Tell me a little bit about what drove you to create it and what do you expect from this? Yeah, so I did a small Bitcoin movie five years ago, and since then, as you know, the space has exploded. Right, it's hundred times bigger. There's big scams and big billionaires in the space. So there's there's a lot of action, and now I think it, it has permeated into the mainstream. Right? People talk about blockchain here. It's all over Davos. So it's it's a, not only natural to make a film. I love that, and you know, Oliver, I, I want to thank you. Uh, in the wee hours of the morning, while you're flying back into Europe. Uh, Oliver call, called me and said, well, you have to sit down and we have to do this. And I'm so glad we had a chance to bump in here. You know, of all the places, of all the people, with all the thousand people here, we end up finally colliding. And I'm glad. Oliver, um, tell me what this movie was like for you. Well, uh, for me, it's super exciting to uh, have been able to be part of this project. Uh, and when Torsten came up with the idea like one and a half years ago, I was really uh, passionate about it. And uh, I uh, basically opened up my Rolodex and uh, connected him to many people, to Fabian Vogelsteller, the inventor of the ERC20 token, Bruce Pons, many of the, the big uh, uh, bright guys here in the space. And I think we got some pretty exciting stuff out of it with his team. That's amazing. So tell us a little bit what it was like producing and directing this, because y you mentioned something about all the the kind of the hurdles, the ups and downs, some of the scandals, and, and you couldn't be more true. It's what everybody thinks of when they think of crypto, and where is it going? Take a long, take a minute. Tell us a little bit about the experience you went through. I think is making a film is one thing we all know, but you're making a film about what's happening in real time right now, and it's in an investment community. This is going to mean something. So I'm going to pass this to you. Thanks. Yeah, so I think um, the challenge of making a film like this is how do you stay relevant? This, the space is moving so fast. If I talk about a project that's dead in two months' time, why do I want it in the film? So the, the, the challenge is to write it in such a way that it's still accurate in two, three, four years' time. And I think I went through that exercise five years ago in my first Bitcoin film. It's still 90% accurate, so I kind of have, have, a, have a good feel on it. And regarding the, the personalities, you know, for me, it's kind of fun to, to talk and challenge those people, right? They, they believe their own bu bullshit so much, they rarely have journalists asking the tough questions. And I'm trying to do that. And actually, they enjoy it. They enjoy me asking the tough questions. I, I don't know how it is for you. You have a similar role, I think, right? You know what? I, I, don't, I don't really ask tough questions. I, I throw them up like this and let you guys go, you know, team up, knock them out. Uh, but no, get in, get in some of the stuff. Tell us some of the questions you ask. So what are some of the, the takeaways and highlights that you could look back and go, I cannot believe? That it happened. Yeah. Well, I mean, five years ago, all these guys were on the same team. They were fighting against the establishment. Yeah. Now they're fighting against each other. My coin is the real Bitcoin. This guy is the wrong Bitcoin. You know, stuff like that is happening. Then they all talk about, oh, we're building this decentralized currency, this decentralized system. But there's one guy in charge of it, one guy uh, with all the billions of dollars uh, behind it. So you have to really question some of these big, big claims. And that's why the film is called Cryptopia. There's a lot of utopian or crypto utopian ideas behind it. So, Oliver, um, you're on, you, you straddle. Now you're on the entertainment side of this. Uh, you're on the institutional side. Um, and um, you're, you're a thought leader in the industry. What was this like for you contributing to the film? Well, uh, first of all, it was really exciting also to uh, to connect basically to the people or reconnect to the people who really built the infrastructure on the one side and also connect the dots to the application side, uh, which is uh, the industries, financial services industries, where we will see a revolution in the payments uh, first, uh, but then also uh, in other fields. And uh, for me, um, yeah, it's simply also, I mean, film uh, is new the whole business to me, so it was also very new experience there. Yeah. If I can add to that, the original crypto crowd are the anarchists and the libertarians, right? And then the professionals come in, and, and I think um, Oliver represents that kind of new mindset, the professionals, the big industries, the enterprise project that you've been consulting. So I think this is part of the story here. Um, 
used to be a small little project, now it's a big, huge industry. Maybe also, I mean, what we are doing with Untitled now is basically we build on that and launch own ventures like, for example, Liquidity, I'm looking into um, utilizing uh, these uh, inventions and innovations um, to, uh, to do um, uh, security token offerings for the, uh, <coughs> the professional sports uh, teams, uh, which means um, combine innovative funding and fan engagement, uh, which was not possible with conventional um, financial services instruments. You know, um, tokens is not, are not a new thing for the entertainment industry. Um, it, we, we forget at a very young age, we all played skee ball, you know, in Chuck E. Cheese or whatever. You roll the ball, kids, and their little, little tickets come out, and you exchange those tickets for a piece of candy. And fundamentally, we're talking about the same thing, except they're virtual instead of a physical ticket. As you're exchanging them, you know, bartering for, for commerce. You know, uh, and I think the entertainment industry is, is a great way to top off and use that kind of... That kind of yeah, and, and exactly, and there's a lot of emotion also there. Uh, and this is why uh, this could be a space where we will see uh, maybe mass adoption relatively early um, versus uh, in other industries, for instance, in the financial services industry, more, more broadly in the corporate world, we will see more, uh, let's say, blockchain inside solutions. So things that where you will see products that are using the technology, products and services, but not so much talking about uh, blockchain or DLT, um, because we don't we use our phones without, uh, let's say, talking about a TCP/IP protocol or something like that. We, but still, it's essential that it works. Yeah. So. So okay. So um, I tell you what. Before we get into rat rolling and stuff, because I know you both are very busy and. We got a crazy crowd upstairs at the Caspi week here. Uh, MIT is throwing some sort of like you know panel session up there, and you can probably hear the noise pouring in here. Um, uh, can you give us a little spoiler? Yes, I can. Um, so we were the only film crew to ever be allowed in the secret Bitcoin bunker. This is a cool story. You're gonna love that. It is a thing. 10% of all private keys are held in that bunker. It's a secret location in Switzerland, M a decommissioned military bunker, nuclear grade doors, uh, various security measures. It took us weeks to get in there, and we couldn't even film half of it because it was so secret. You go inside the bunker, then down into like an elevator. It's, it was crazy. So it's a, it's a fun little four minute sec sequence in the film, and the insiders love because they have not seen it, and the outsiders who have no idea about crypto, they start to understand, wow, this is a real industry, there's real infrastructure being built. These guys are, you know, mean money. And you probably have a lot of hackers out there paying <laughs> real close attention. Um, that's real money in, in a real military institution. Um, let's talk about the rollout. It's rolling out worldwide. Where did it start? Where can we expect it to end up in New York? So, um, look, I'm super, super happy that uh, Melbourne was the premier last week. Melbourne is my hometown in Australia. Uh, we're now here in Europe, so we're doing a few Swiss um, events. We're doing a few German events uh, with Oliver's help, Luxembourg, London, uh, Oxford University. Um, and then we're going to go to America, kind of build the buzz. And then America is obviously the biggest market. Start on the East Coast, then uh, go to L.A. and then Asia. So that's the cinema tour. And after the cinema, we hopefully launch on, I don't know, maybe your network or Netflix or who, who else uh, wants to be oh, by? I tell you, you, you let give us a, a red carpet pass and, and we'll be there. <laughs> we'll be there. <laughs> um, ladies and gentlemen, Cryptopia. Uh, we've got Tustin Hoffman and Oliver Krauss. Gentlemen, we can, they can, thank you for coming on. I really appreciate it. It's really good to see you. You're always a delight to have.